and by the authority vested in me by the State of New York Board of Regents and the Board of Trustees of Siena College, I hereby confer upon Virginia Kraft Payson the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters with all the rights, privileges, honors, and responsibilities pertaining thereto, and declare her a daughter of Siena College forever. In token thereof, I ask the chair of our faculty to invest her with the insignia of that degree, and I ask Mr. Robert Cushing to present the diploma. Uh, I thank Siena College for this wonderful honor. Mr. Uh, Fa Father Kevin, Bishop, uh, faculty, trustees, and graduates. I grew up in a New York City apartment. Because the buildings are very close together, the bottom half of my bedroom window was frosted. That was for privacy. One evening, when I was five or six, my father lifted me up and stood me on the windowsill so I could see above the frosted glass. The moon was full. It was in a brilliantly clear sky, and it looked close enough to touch. You can go there someday, my father told me. You can do anything you want as long as you want it and work for it. The whole universe is out there waiting for you. That, that was a long time before anyone or anything went to the moon. But that, that event and that memory has guided my entire life. I never forgot Right now, against, uh, amidst the doom and gloom that we hear about daily, the future may not appear to be quite limitless to you graduates, uh, especially to people about to step into it. It is little consolation that tough times and even tougher job markets are not really new. Over the years, it has been a roller coaster for graduates. Some things great, sometimes great, and sometimes terrible. My father graduated from college in June of 1929 and immediately started in a cushy job in New York real estate. Four months later, when the great crash came, that was definitely not the business to be in. It was not the best of times to enter the job market when I graduated either especially as an English literature major. About three quarters of the English lit majors headed for the New York fashion magazines, uh, where the lucky ones who actually were hired uh, wound up with jobs as assistants to the assistants to the assistant caption writer. Um, the other one quarter got married and that was considered okay in those days. Uh, since childhood, I knew that I wanted to write for a magazine, but I also knew that the opportunity to do so would take forever at the fashion magazines. And besides, I really wasn't terribly interested in how far the hemline was off the, off the floor. Instead, I decided to go to the phone book and look up the outdoor magazines, where I didn't think any of, of my fellow graduates would be competing. Uh, the first one, alphabetically, was Field and Stream. I walked into its offices cold and offered my editorial services. Although I had no background in the outdoors, uh, I didn't tell them that. I figured I could probably learn what I needed to learn fast enough. The editor who interviewed me, <clears throat> at first somewhat uh, startled at the prospect of a, a young woman invading his bastion of maildom, uh, rapidly calculated that he could offer to pay me about one-third of what he would have to pay a man to do the same job. 
so he promptly hired me on the spot. This was, incidentally, about three times what I could have hoped to be paid at the fashion magazines. We both figured we had made a pretty shrewd deal. I spent a, half, a year and a half at Field and Stream and gained a master's worth of knowledge about the outdoors. The magazine was a nine to five operation. At the stroke of five, everybody stopped whatever was being done, whether in the middle of a sentence or not, and left for the day. I stayed on after five, at least until seven every, every afternoon, evening, and worked my way through the archives, starting at A and continuing on through the, through the, through the alphabet. It was fascinating stuff. I began exploring what I was reading about. On weekends, I learned to fish, to use a bow and arrow, and to shoot. By the time hunting season rolled around, I was ready. I was invited on a pheasant shoot in Pauling, New York, for some of the advertising dignitaries of the magazine. The shoot was the last day of deer season. I went up the night before so that I might have one last chance at a deer the next morning before the dignitaries arrived for the pheasant shoot. Getting up before dawn, I hiked about a mile to an orchard I'd been shown the night before. There I put all my newly acquired stalking techniques to work and moved upwind through the orchard. I heard the deer before I saw him, and definitely before he saw me. He stopped startled about 25 feet in front of me, and I aimed and fired. By the time the dignitaries arrived, my host and I were hoisting a beautiful six-point deer into a tree. Among the dignitaries was the late great sports writer for the old Herald Tribune, Red Smith, who wrote a column about the lady hunter who brought back the trophy before the men had even arrived. An editor who was putting together a staff for a still to be named sports magazine read Red Smith's column the next day and offered me a job. That then unpublished, that then unpublished magazine became Sports Illustrated. And that job lasted 26 years and was full of excitement, adventure, and professional satisfaction and achievement. It was truly a magic carpet. Amazingly, my second career, breeding and racing thoroughbred horses, has also been a magic carpet. It's been every bit as exciting and satisfying as the first. Neither career, however, has been all glamour. Uh, behind the scenes of both have been hard work, long hours, no nine to five, and the determination to try to do everything just a little bit better and sometimes a little bit differently than it had been done before. And behind the scenes also has been the unerring belief that began so many years ago when I looked out my bedroom window at that full moon, that no goal is beyond reach if you are willing to work for it. A friend of mine has a favorite saying. He, he always says, the harder I work, the luckier I get. That's not a bad motto for a life. Thank you very much.